Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. The top headlines tonight. The Uttarakhand chief minister is removed by the BGP high command. He resigns today, just a year before elections in the Hill state. BGP MLAs had complained against the chief minister. Apparently, the Congress says it's because of corruption. West Bengal chief minister takes on BGP's Hindutva card at a rally in Nandigram, where she'll be contesting from. She recites the Chandi part says she won't allow a Hindu-Muslim divide in her state. She visits a temple and a mazar at Nandigram. India crosses 2.5 million vaccinations a day. IMF chief economist Geeta Gopinath says India's vaccine policy stands out globally. India summons the British High Commissioner in Delhi, saying gross interference in democratic politics of another country. The demarche to the High Commissioner as British MPs debated farmers' protests in a Westminster committee room inside Britain's parliament. A Desh Bhakti budget by the AAP government. 45 crores now for 500 national flags across sites in Delhi. Well, the other big political story, the Maha fight in the state assembly today after a man who owned the SUV in which explosives were found outside Mukesh Ambani's house was found mysteriously dead. His wife claims that he was in regular touch with Mumbai senior police officer Sachin Waze, who was in charge of the case. The BGP says he should now be arrested. The Maharashtra Home Minister says why was the case removed from the state ATS? Our lead story tonight, the Uttarakhand Chief Minister Trivendra Rawat has resigned just a year before state elections are due in the Hill State. It's an unusual move coming after he met the BGP High Command in Delhi yesterday. He was apparently asked to resign because of complaints by BGP MLAs, but the Congress claims corruption. However, there's a larger message going out from the BGP as well with this removal. Sanket has the details. So Triven Singh Rawat has been removed and this decision is unusual. But what exactly is the motive or the attempt? Attempt to control perception damage in the state. Uh, Triven Singh Rawat has been seen among MLAs as a misfit. MLAs complained against Rawat's style of functioning as well as his performance. In fact, uh, Rawat's removal is also being seen as an attempt to mitigate the corruption charge. What is this corruption charge? Let's listen into the Congress's allegation. मैं समझता हूं कि यह नाकाफी है और भारतीय जनता पार्टी इसी तरीके के एस्केप रूट हमेशा ढूंढने की कोशिश करती है आज कांग्रेस पार्टी इस मुद्दे को लेकर यह मांग करती है भारतीय जनता पार्टी से मान्य राष्ट्रपति महोदय से कि इस सरकार को तुरंत बर्खास्त किया जाना चाहिए और सिर्फ त्रिवेंद्र रावत के इस्तीफे से इसका काम चलने वाला नहीं है so let's quickly tell you what this corruption allegation is. There were allegations against Rawat during his term as in charge of Jharkhand. This is much before he became the chief minister. The allegation is that money was deposited in Rawat's associate account for a posting in Jharkhand because he was BJP in charge of Jharkhand. The Uttarakhand High Court had ordered the CBI to register an FIR in this case. However, Rawat moved the Supreme Court to get a stay order on the High Court order. So that's where the case stands. But these allegations are still there in the political circles. Let's quickly listen in to what Rivain Singh Rawat himself said uh, after resigning. He said ये निर्णय लिया कि मुझे अब किसी और को ये मौका देना चाहिए। now, what could this decision actually mean? So this, this decision actually could be seen as a vote of no confidence against the own government, which is something which the Congress has started saying. The Congress calls this an admission of failure. Uh, also, this is the first big decision of a Modi appointment, a Modi appointed chief minister being removed. Remember, so far Modi is known. Uh, as a person who once uh, he has taken a decision does not roll back his decision. But uh, such a decision has been taken. Now what is the Uttarakhand chief minister fix? No chief minister in Uttarakhand has completed a full term. And once changed, no incumbent has come back to power in Uttarakhand. But this is history. Is history going to repeat itself or something new going to happen 
come February 2022. The BGP has indicated the new chief minister will be sworn in on Shivratri. That's on the 11th of March, just two days from now. Let's, however, go to the other big political story. Well, the battle for Bengal. Mamta Banerjee is today in her constituency in Nandigram. She will be filing her nominations tomorrow. She's back there after 14 years. She visited a temple there, was also at a mazar. This as she took on the BGP today. And what she said was the BGP trying to play the Hindu card. She recited mantras on stage. She said that her Hinduism doesn't divide people. She will not allow a Hindu-Muslim divide in Nandigram. She also today there's Mamta Banerjee's Chai Pe Charcha there she is serving tea at a tea stall having tea herself as well so the chief minister there just on the eve of her nomination from Nandigram tomorrow where we shall be taking on the BGP Suvendu Adhikari till recently her right hand man in Nandigram Back to where it all began, in a way, for Mamta Banerjee, to Nandigram, the battlefield of 2007 that catapulted her to the chief minister's chair. In a constituency that has nearly 30% minority vote, Mamta Banerjee took the bull by the horns, challenging the charge of appeasement by reciting the Chandi part at length. Her first stop after the rally was a temple where she did Chandi Puja as well. Amyo Hindu Gorerime Amar Sate Hindu God Kelte Javenna Amar Sate Hindu God Kelte Gele her BJP rival for Nandigram, former ally, now foe, Shubhendu Adhikari has labelled her outsider and asked Nandigram to vote Bhumi Putra. Mamta demolished that charge. On the ground, emotional support for Mamta. Some anger at Shubhendu, anger also at Trinamool workers who betrayed all that Mamta Banerjee stands for. Mamta has rented two rooms in this house in Nandigram's Bortola area for a year. She files her nomination Wednesday, Shubhendu on Friday, and that's when the knives will be out. Mamta making the most of her first mover advantage. The Khala Hobe slogan is back. Mamta Banerjee herself raising it at this rally here. The response of the people, huge. April 1, that's when the votes will be cast here. A big day for Bengal. In Nandigram with Habib Ali, Monadipa Banerjee, NDTV. Well, the other big headline, a setback for the AIA-DMK BGP alliance as the DMDK's Captain Vijaykant exited the alliance over unhappiness of seat sharing. Reports are that he may go for an alliance with Dinakaran. However, Kamal Hassan is also reaching out to him as well. Sir, Nadang tu mudik tu dekapar, bunggal ke anda bawa lagi soal lagi. Nada kemari, ada nada dah hartam kalau kau dah dengi. Well, moving to other headlines now, the big news is India's vaccinations and we've crossed two and a half million. That's a record number of vaccinations and we're all set to touch three million in the coming days. 
Here's what IMF's chief economist Geeta Gopinath said on this today. You know, India really stands out in terms of uh, its vaccine uh, policy. So if you look at, uh, you know, where exactly is one of the manufacturing hub for vaccines in the world, that will be India. When you have the Serum Institute, which produces uh, the most number of vaccines in the world in a regular year. Uh, and uh, because of this, India has been at the forefront in fighting this pandemic. It's also been, uh, you know, providing through grants, it's been providing uh free vaccines to several of its neighbor countries. So global praise for India's vaccination policy there. And today, uh, newsmakers continue to get their vaccines. LK Advani, BJP Patriarch today, also MK Stalin of the DMK and BJP President JP Nadda, all vaccinated today. Our death is very important, but our mortality rate is very low. और हमारी रिकवरी रेट बहुत अच्छी रही और हमारे डॉक्टर्स ने सब लोगों ने बहुत अच्छा काम किया इसमें उनको वो बधाई के पात्र हैं और मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में उन लोगों ने जो देश के कोरोना वॉरियर्स ने रिस्पॉन्ड किया उससे भी हमें बड़ी सफलता मिली है जहां तक एचसीक्यू और पैरासिटामॉल का सवाल है तो लगभग डेढ़ से ज्यादा देशों को बड़ी मात्रा में भारत एक तरीके से कोरोना के निवारण के लिए एक फैसिलिटेट करने का सबसे बड़ा माध्यम बना और 150 देशों को हमने इसमें समावेश किया एंड लेट्स जस्ट गो अक्रॉस टू परमेश्वर फॉर डेली वैक्सीनेशन रिपोर्ट अपडेट let's dive right into the vaccination data now if you notice we saw a sudden slump right here which was a sunday we had highlighted this before but in a record india has actually um, vaccinated 20 lakh people yesterday in the last 24 hours which is quite a sudden jump but again positive development if we have a look at the states with the highest percentage increase in covid cases we have punjab still topping the charts with 0.61% now while this does look like a decimal number it is a quite a colossal um, jump in cases punjab is followed by maharashtra at 0.45% we also have gujarat at an increase of 0.21% in covid cases followed by madhya pradesh at 0.17% increase in covid cases and then kerala at 0.2%. Now in terms of how India is faring on the global scale, let's have a quick look. The US is still leading the charts in terms of covid cases and covid deaths. We have a 0.2% increase in cases in the US followed shortly by India again a 0.2% increase in covid cases. We have Brazil followed after India with 0.6% uh, uh, increase in cases. Then we have Russia with a 0.3% increase in COVID cases. And then we end with the United Kingdom at 0.1% increase in COVID cases. Now the key takeaways are India crosses a landmark in COVID-19 vaccination. More than 2.3 crore doses have been administered just in the last 24 hours. Now Chief Economist of the IMF, Geeta Gopinath, has also hailed the country for playing a very important role during the crisis by manufacturing and shipping the COVID-19 vaccines to several nations, explicitly saying that India really stands out in terms of its vaccine policy. Now, the new cases of coronavirus infection in India were recorded above 15,000, while the recovery rate has increased to 96.93%. The big worry, though, Maharashtra, Kerala, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Karnataka continue to report a surge in COVID daily cases. These states cumulatively account for 84.04% of the new cases reported in the past 24 hours. Thanks, Parmeshwar. I'll move into the other big headline. Remember, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson was meant to be the chief guest for Republic Day. Well, things have clearly gone down in there since then, since the Foreign Secretary today issued a demarche. That means he summoned the British High Commissioner in Delhi after a debate by British MPs in a room inside uh, Britain's parliament on farmer protests. The Foreign Secretary conveyed strong opposition to what India said was the unwarranted and tendentious discussion on farm laws, saying that this was gross interference in the domestic politics of another democratic country. Hundreds of farmers have died already because of the freezing cold and because of ill health 
At a time when bilateral ties between India and the UK have never been better, British parliamentarians set aside 90 minutes to debate the issue of farmers' safety and freedom of press in India. In a response to several opposition MPs raising concerns over safety of farmers and journalists in India, UK Minister of State for Asia, Nigel Adams, said the UK's close ties with India doesn't hinder it from raising concerns. The UK maintains that India is a friend, that India is as good as a neighbour and that the bilateral ties have never been as exciting as currently. The UK also says that however the friendship and however strong the friendship, it doesn't hinder the United Kingdom from raising concerns if there were any. To arrange a, uh, and discuss a range of bilateral issues with India where we have serious and serious and specific concerns, we will raise them directly with the Indian government, as you'd expect of a friend and neighbour. Opposition MPs, including Jeremy Corbyn of the Labour Party, expressed concern over what they felt was curbing press freedom. The nature of the way in which the protesters, the strikers have been attacked in Delhi is unprecedented, but also unprecedented has been the reaction of the Indian government towards the way in which the media respond. Internet access has been closed down. Media access has been prevented. The Indian government found supporters in ruling Conservative MP Perry Savilliers. No policing response can altogether avoid controversial episodes. After all, complaints about police officers here in the UK are frequently made after mass protests. But that isn't evidence that democratic values are under threat in this country and nor is it in India. A petition a initiated by Liberal Democrats Mr. leader Gurch Singh well, garnered been, over uh, one uh, lakh signatures South across the UK countries. within weeks. The uh, Indian diaspora has a large presence of members of the Sikh community. Uh, the is, Several Labour MPs, including in Seema Malhotra, Tanmanjit Singh Deshi, Virendra Sharma, shared their personal ties with farmer families in India. The Indian High Commission in London shared a response following the debate. The HCI said, we deeply regret that rather than a balanced debate, false assertions without substantiation or facts were made, casting aspirations on the largest democracy in the world. Foreign media, including the British media, are present in India and witness the events under discussion firsthand. The question of lack of freedom of the media in India does not arise, said the High Commission. Radhika Ayer in London, NDTV. Well, moving to other news, Delhi's finance minister announced a Desh Bhakti budget today to mark the 75th year of independence. The government will hold 75 events for 75 weeks, also 45 crores for 500 national flags across Delhi. क्योंकि हमारी सरकार ने यह तय किया है कि हम आजादी के 75वें वर्ष को अपने शहीदों को श्रद्धा पूर्वक याद करते हुए और उनके सपनों को आगे बढ़ाने के संकल्प संकल्प के साथ इस पूरे वर्ष को धूमधाम से आन-बान के साथ के साथ मनाएंगे और सिर्फ पूरे वर्ष ही नहीं इस अवसर पर सरकार ने पूरे 75 सप्ताह तक के समय को देशभक्ति के महोत्सव के रूप में मनाने का फैसला किया है इस महोत्सव की शुरुआत इसी सप्ताह 12 मार्च से धूमधाम से महान स्वतंत्रता नायकों के सम्मान में आयोजित एक भव्य कार्यक्रम से होगी so Desh Bhakti on the Delhi government's agenda. But moving now to the other big headline from Mumbai. NDTV has accessed photographs of a key suspect in the case where a car with explosives was found outside Mukesh Ambani's Intila residence. The picture there, you can see the suspect in a PP suit on the CCTV grab. But meanwhile, politically, this was dominating the Maharashtra Assembly today with the sensational charges of the dead man, the man who owned this SUV, who was found dead, his wife claiming that senior police officer Sachin Vaz was involved. <laughs> BJP MLA shouting slogans in the state assembly today against the Home Minister over the mysterious death of Mansukh Hirin, the owner of a Scorpio car, which was found abandoned outside the residence of billionaire Mukesh Ambani with gelatin of explosives inside. Mansukh Hirin's wife has now filed a police FIR, which makes sensational charges against senior police officer Sachin Vaze, the officer who was investigating the case before it was transferred to the ATS. Her statement says, Officer Sachin Vaze was known to my husband. 
In November 2020, my husband gave a car to Waze. The car was handed back to us on February 5th, 2021. My husband informed that there was steering issue. On 17 February, my husband left for Mumbai in the same car. After Mullen Toll Plaza, he felt steering was hard. My husband parked the car by the roadside. On 18 February, person from our shop found car was missing. My husband filed complaint in Vikroli on 18 February. On 25th February, ATS officer called my husband downstairs. Officer showed him photo of a car. He identified it. On 26th and 27th February, my husband went to crime branch with Vaze. On 28th February, my husband recorded statement. Copy has Vaze's sign. On 4th March, he said he was going to meet a cop for opinion. He can't die by drowning as he is a good swimmer. You are not doing any work in the country. We are not doing any work in the country. We are not doing any work in the country. We are not doing any work in the country. तुम्हें मुभा देता अरे माननीय मंत्री बोरे हाँ खरा चेहरा रिश्तो है खरा चेहरा कि जहाँ वही इतके सगले पुरावे समोर आलेन अंतर देखेल केवल एका विशिष्ट पक्षा मरे चन्नी प्रवेश केला होता मरोन चन्ना वास्तवने ऐसा प्रयत्न अध्यक्ष मोदे हाँ पूर्ण पढ़े चूका है तपास एटीएस करते हैं कि त्या एटीएस क्या � As more and more details are emerging out of this case, it has once again put pressure on the government. At the start of the assembly, it was the Sanjay Rathod case. By the end of it, the Mansukh Hiren case has rocked the assembly once again. In Mumbai with camera person Rajendra Dhyalkar, this is Purva Chitnas for NDTV.